Don't forget your shoelace. You don't want a floppy cable. I think I still know how to weld, so that's pretty cool. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Z28 made its first track debut a few weeks ago and um, we've got some work to do. We got some things coming up that I want to get the car ready for, uh, basically more legal for I should say. We don't have a drive shaft loop, we don't have a parachute mount, which is not necessary, but um, the car would probably definitely trap over 150 and a quarter. And I don't want to get kicked out because I didn't have a parachute going over 150, it'd be silly. And the package tray in the rear. So package tray has all these holes in it, which I need to take the rear glass out, get a piece of aluminum, cut out all that stuff and make our own. So everything else in the cab is pretty much done. I am going to be wiring a secondary starter button somewhere probably in this area or just somewhere on the firewall at all if we have to do any maintenance. Um, let's see, last time we went out, the alternator, we switched the pulley over to the stock size pulley and got a new belt for that. So it's no longer a stretch fit belt. Stretch fit belt. It's just a standard four rib belt, so it's nice and tight. Um, we weren't really charging the battery. We are kind of just maintaining it with RPM. So I thought we would need this. Well, I guess we don't because it wasn't really charging the battery and it could just be our setup. We do have a lot of electrics on the car, intercooler pump, fuel pump, um, fans, trans fan, Lots of electric uh, rich stuff. So there's probably just too much for the battery, too much for the alternator to keep up. Now if we had a mechanical pump, um, still have electric fans and whatnot, no intercooler would probably be fine, but we do. So we're gonna change it where we already did and it's charging fine now. So there's a few things we gotta do and there's a few things I've been doing and I'll show you that right away is we added some more service lights. So they're the same lights that's inside the cab. Just got a basic single throw switch. And we also put a little strip underneath the rear end for any type of service or work or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, so that's really about it. But I mainly did this one to have light back here, but, and also I wanted to go to the Christmas tree drag race that's held by Cletus McFarland at Bradenton Motorsports Park. Um, I just checked the website this morning. Our approval for the car is still pending, but the tickets say sold out. So I would imagine they're sold out. I would imagine they're gonna deny the car because they're sold out. Um, either way, kind of sucks. I wanted to do that last year for this year, but uh, hey, it is what it is. But we have things to do. We have a drive shaft loop coming that we'll have to probably modify, fabricate, um, and then weld to the car the subframe connectors and we also have a parachute mount. Now I picked this up yesterday from Applied Racing Technology and it's our lake, local um, local speed shop local guys that have pretty much anything and everything you need to build a car from like a pro stock car to a literally anything they have so much stuff it's crazy so parachute mount we got a plate for their bumper, which I'm going to show you guys how I plan on doing so. And then the inch and a half um, receiver right here. And then the tube with the, right here with this, uh, this bracket on here, this is inch and a quarter. And then the tube for the chute itself is one inch. And it's all 120 wall stuff, so it's really thick. It is mild steel, so it's a little bit heavier. So is the plate. But I'm... Um, very inexpensive compared to other companies. And it'll do the same job. So going over to the bumper, my idea is to put it straight here. Drill hole right there. Use that hole um, because behind here, and I'll try to show you, this is all metal, right? And it, that metal carries down through the bumper literally right here. So behind the cover, there's a little piece of plastic, but then it goes to metal so I want to drill it through here which will also leave us a nice line so it'll be about right here maybe a little bit lower about halfway of the bumper which means if you come up to the engine and you can kind of see where the headers are sitting if you make a straight line 
it's going to sit about the same area as the camshaft. And so from all my research, when you put a chute mount on there, you want it to be in the center line of the car, the center line gravity of the car, which is pretty, pretty close to where it should be, if not where it should be. Um, but yeah, we're going to give that a shot. I, like I said, I have an idea. It's not, it's not your run of the mill, like whole tube uh, mount that's sandwich plate between the bumper. Nobody makes chute mounts for these cars. We don't have a fiberglass bumper. We have a stock rear bumper. And I'm going to take advantage of that with this plate. This plate. So I have an idea. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put the hole in the bumper. And then I'm going to show you guys my idea. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> Pretty damn good. So that's where our chute mount will go. As you can see, it's pretty pretty straight. So I'm pretty happy with that. It might be off a little bit, but it's also a plastic bumper. Um, nice tight fit though. As you can see there was a little bit of uh, like insert bumper materials type stuff, but there's the metal that I want. So step two is to take the bumper off and uh, go from there. All right, guys, bumper's off. I'm going to go ahead and drill out all of these uh, rivets that hold the cover onto the bumper support and uh, get you a better view of how we're going to do this. But basically what my original idea was is to take this plate, put it behind in this channel right here on that metal, take the tube, go through the hole, weld it to the plate around here, slide it back through the hole, and then you have another piece of metal that's sitting like right here, or you know, probably down here somewhat, but then weld around it on the outside. So it'd be welded on the inside and the outside, and then you have the plate to hold it back. But since I forgot that there's this piece of, um, piece of, well, junk ass steel welded here, what I could do, what I might do is actually cut this off and use that fresh piece that's up there that we have a really nice piece to weld to and then slide it through the hole, weld it from the outside and possibly just tack it from the inside going through the hole that way again. So we have a, a few ways to do it. And some of you might be thinking that, oh, well, you, you know, you can't do that because you're just welding it to the bumper. You're not supporting it from the frame. Well, you're wrong because that's how this bumper bolts to the car. It bolts to the back of the car where the subframe rails are at. Well, close to it enough, I should say. I mean, there's the holes, right? Look where the leaf spring's at. Look where the holes are at. That pocket goes right here. So a lot of the ones you see, like on motion, for example, is they utilize these holes, run a bar, these holes, and then a bar sticking out to go through the bumper. But since this is such a over-engineered bumper support cover bracket monstrosity i'm just going to take advantage of using this heavy piece of crap and making it the parachute mount so yes it's really heavy it's probably eh, i mean it's probably 45 50 pounds so my original idea was to utilize the holes and then make a bar and do it myself but why not if i have the plate to do it there it's going to be welded to the support, so it is going to be structurally sound. And there's no doubt about that. So, um, yeah, 
go ahead and get the bumper cover off. Like I said, I'll probably cut this plate off, but I'll evaluate that later. And then we will continue our parachute mount install. Well, I had my phone set up, you guys, and uh, forgot to hit play, but um, I think I still know how to weld, so that's pretty cool. I haven't welded in months. Actually, it's probably been six to eight months at least. But uh, yeah, these turned out pretty good. Just mild steel, about 100 amps, and it just took my time. There's probably eight to 10 passes on that. And uh, yeah, good penetration. I have one little, two little hot spots, but um, overall pretty happy with how those came out. We got all the welding. We did some TIG welding. We got the MIG, the ESOP fired up. But, but damn, look at that. We got ourselves the start of a shoot mount, boys. All right, so the bumper's just barely in there, but yeah, look how straight that is. That looks so good. So, totally, totally happy with that. Now, it's just temporarily done. It's, or, sorry, it's just tacked on there, so it's not done yet. You see, I just threw a couple tacks. I'm gonna have to take a, either a torch or uh, something to, to bend this down or heat it up, push it down. So I'll probably do a couple tacks, start hitting on it with a hammer, beat on it like it owes me money and then uh, close up this gap. So otherwise it's doing really good. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna TIG weld the outside of that or not. I kind of want to, but I kind of just want to make it. I don't know, we'll see. I'll probably end up TIG welding it because I don't get to TIG weld that much. So, so far so good. It's gonna look really good and it's gonna be super functional. So I don't wanna hit that too hard, even though there's tax on it, but so far, I mean, it's dead straight too. You guys see that? So this should be very good and very easy for those of you that have a second gen F body and want to add a shoot mount without going through the hassle of trying to make your entire bumper. So we'll go ahead and take this off or burn it in and uh, fit the bumper and start uh, cutting back, start trimming some stuff up. All right, final TIG welding is done. Definitely not my best TIG welds, but um, I think it was running a little bit too hot. I actually turned it down to about 90 amps, but I think the metal was already heat soaked from the MIG welding. So they didn't turn out the best, but you know what? They're gonna hold and you're not even gonna see them. So uh, MIG welding is done. If I can do this one handed, there you go. MIG welding done. Had a little hiccup right there. Kind of had to stop and restart. Not sure what was going on. Haven't used the machine in a while, but the bumper itself is actually complete. So we'll let this cool down. I need to get some rivets to put the bumper cover back on. Actually, I have rivets to do so. But um, yeah, so we can put this back on the car and then we can put the bumper on and measure where we need to make our cut. And then we need to drill a hole through this and through the, you know, portion of the parachute as well so it won't be that long it'll probably be down to here somewhat if i had to take a guess it'll be a few inches past the license plate but we need to put a hole through both of these and um next we need to cope and measure our bar for the chute itself so that'll be our upright bar and then i got these little tabs that we'll put you know on the back side like that and then one on the front side just so this is more sturdy and then if anything i was just thinking about this is when i weld this together like that i could possibly cut somebody cut a corner off of here and here and use those to support the you know the back piece as well so i can actually put a cut there and a cut there but i'm not sure if i should do that because i need to get the shoot bag first and see how it's all going to lay out so not a big of a deal. I don't think really people brace this at all, but I guess we'll find out. But yeah, I probably don't need to brace it at all. It's only holding the bed. So yeah, I'm gonna let this cool down. We're gonna go ahead and put it back on the car, um, get the bumper cover back on the car in place. And then we, uh, we will get to trimming and drilling this bad boy. Well, we got the receiver tube shortened we got it cut up we got a pilot hole in the receiver tube but not in the 
the shoot tube is what we'll call it. So, got it leveled out. Put that else. So we're in line with the plane, so it's nice and level. I'll go ahead and drill the pilot hole into the, the chute tube. <coughs> and uh, we'll go ahead and step it up to a half inch because that's the bolt that it takes in there. So, in the hill, then grill straight. Probably really bad for my drill bit, but came out the same hole on the other side, so we're good, nice and straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and step this up all the way up to half inch. So put a bolt in it and uh, should be good to go. Okay, well that was an endeavor drilling this big old hole, but got it done. Almost broke my wrist about three times, but that's okay. Um, yeah, she's in there pretty good. Not a lot of slot for the half inch hole that it requires. So what we'll do now is I'll take this out. We'll put the bumper cover back on. And then what we'll do is get our measurements for our upright bar for the shoot bag and uh, go from there. it up i just put a coat of steel it on it and uh, the final result came out pretty damn good if i say so myself so with uh like i was saying just a little bit of hard or a lot of hard work and a little bit of knowledge you guys can do this stuff too so it's nice and straight once it's tight so i'm super glad that my ocd kicked in and got everything perfectly straight and level and center and whatnot welds came out really good around the base of the plate um, even down here, came out pretty decent on the tube, the upright. The little support fitting, those welds are trash. I forgot to grind down all the mil spec crap off of, or the, whatever you want to call it, the coating that they use. I forgot to grind that off, so I had to kind of panic, get it off. But this side came out pretty decent. The other side was where I started and turned out to be trash. But nonetheless, solid, really solid. Um shoot mount can't be happier with it so never thought i'd be one the one doing it to the car but here we are got it done pretty good the level is pretty good for air so once we get the chute it'll be out here a little bit more which is above the rear spoiler so the air will grab the chute and deploy it all right so we finally got our parachute our cable our chute handle we got a the billet end cap from motion and we got the uh, parachute cable holder as well. So you don't want a floppy cable. So all this came in the other day. So thank you to Motion Raceworks for all the sh fast shipping that they always have. We got the chute bag all mounted up to the chute mount. And we got our cable on here as well. So I did have to redrill the two holes over here. Yes, I know there's no threads showing on this lock nut, but I think it'll be fine because nothing actually attaches to this. Obviously the chute, you know, is attached to the car down here. This basically just holds it. So I don't see a problem with it, but we'll go from there. So now I need to pack the chute. So this will be my first time packing the chute. I did watch a couple videos. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot.
forget your shoelace. Currently, I'm just getting over having the Rona. So, I took a little boys trip, bachelor party to Vegas, and coming back, uh, the day I got back, I felt like complete crap. So, took a COVID test, half COVID. Currently getting over that, so this video might take a little bit longer than anticipated, but that's okay. Um, finally feeling a little bit better. I don't sound good, but I actually feel pretty damn good. So, uh, yesterday was a pretty good day as well that's why we're doing the parachute and uh just took a lot out of me just trying to get the chute packed so i just called it quits so again apologize if this takes a little bit longer or if there's a bunch of cuts in between but doing my best to keep going um it's also giving me something to do other than sit in the house and watch tv all day so yeah um we got the parachute packed which was an event all in itself but finally got it figured it out and um yeah, they've completed parachute package deal. And earlier in the video, I was telling you guys that the chute was going to be a couple inches higher than the wing. And it, you know, my predictions were correct. So if you make a straight line, if I even show you guys, it kind of butts right back to the plate. So we got the whole chute. As soon as this thing launches, it'll, it'll definitely catch some wind. So, and uh, we got our remove before flight pin. And our shoelace, which we need to uh, make sure we put somewhere safe so we don't lose it. Um, for trailer hitch ideas, since that's inch and a quarter, right? That's this piece of tubing right here. It's inch and a quarter, which is the excess that I cut off of here. What we're going to do is I'm going to get another piece of this and make it real long that we can bottom out. Because right now this goes all the way back to our plate that we welded. So there's quite a bit of, of tube in there. Um, just for you know structural rigidity and whatnot so i'm gonna do the same thing with this but find a trailer hitch receiver and um maybe one of the small ones and put it put this inside of it cut the receiver in the corners and kind of you know bend it down to the tube and just weld the hell out of it so and then drill our hole and then we should have a nice trailer hitch receiver um combo so um not too worried about that right now only because I would rather get the car on the ground. It should be a pretty decent level. We're pretty much right at the bottom of the bumper anyway, so it should be a pretty good level uh, to have a trailer hitch or trailer on the car. So yeah, I think uh, parachute mount came out pretty good. It is loose, that's why it's wobbly. So the nut is not tight. And as soon as I tighten it, it will stay in one spot. It doesn't wib, you know, wobble around, so. Um, can't even close the garage door with it. So that's why it's loose. We're gonna go ahead and get our parachute handle and cable all ran up and cut to length and whatnot. So um, we'll go ahead and get this accomplished that way we can scratch it off a list. And then we'll just be waiting on some material to come in for our drive shaft loop. So we got the parachute mount all wrapped up. We got the chute on, we got the cable we're in. We got everything in place. It is still loose, so don't worry about the wobble. And um, yeah, like I said, we got our cable ran. We got our cable mount on for Motion Raceworks, which actually helps out pretty well. And we ran it from the driver's side all the way back the cage through the trunk. And that's why it kind of wants to come out toward the passenger side, which works out in our favor. So you can't complain there. And it also leaves it a little bit longer. So if we do change the position of the handle, we do have you know about a foot of extra length. All I have to do is straighten that out for the one side. And we'll be good to go so the applied racing mount came out pretty good um luckily my idea worked pretty well as well uh, you know as well so we'll have to uh, see it and test it see how it goes we'll make our hitch mount coming here in the future but give you guys a little demonstration so here is the handle right there so oh so you throw that and it pulls the cable back just enough just to barely 
the end of that cable end and um you know releases the the chute so yeah there's no way this will ever get caught on that cord which is really nice so all i gotta remember to do is stow it just like that and then boom there she is so we'll go ahead and repin that before i forget and um yeah so really pleased with how that turned out with all the parts that we got all the motion stuff just bolts right up the art stuff fit really well together welded really nice hope you guys enjoyed the video um like i said i think everything came out really well so true test will be to pull the chute once we're actually at the track and see how it does hopefully it keeps the car straight and doesn't try to pull the rear end up off the off the ground so we'll see how it does but like always you guys thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. We'll see you in the next episode.